Hey everybody, what's up? Today we are going to do a video real quick just to go over a little review here for Freewell filters for the camera of the Autel Evo Nano Plus. This is also going to be the same filters for the regular Autel Evo Nano. Uh, same camera frame, just different technology. Uh, but the filters fit both the cameras. Um, we're also going to power it on, make sure it doesn't make the gimbal act all crazy. And then we're also going to throw it on the scale and we'll just throw up a screenshot of what that weighs out at. Um, yes, my sticker's on there too. It doesn't change the weight of the quad. My weight that I've been getting on it is 248 grams. I put my sticker on, I'm still at 248 grams, and then we'll put the filter on there and we'll see if we're at 249 or if we break the scales. So uh, we're going to do that, but before I get into that, I just also wanted to just real quick point out, they also sent me the filters for the uh, Evo Lite Plus, and I just want to point out that these are the, this is the exact same size uh, as the Evo uh, 2 Pro. So um, if you already have these filters and you purchase this, then you're good to go. You don't need to buy them. But uh, they are not for the Evo Lite, just the Evo Lite Plus. And for that, they sent me an all-day pack, and then they sent me a CPL filter. Um, this is the ND4. Turn it around. ND4, ND8, ND16, ND32, ND64, and ND1000. So again, that's the all-day pack. And then the CPL. And that is for the Autel Evo Lite Plus. Again, same size as the Evo 2 Pro. So enough about that. We're going to talk about this guy here. So, um, first off, I just wanted to say thank you, Freewell, for sending me these filters. If you guys have been with me, I've been using Freewell filters for a long time. Uh, and then now they just reach out, thank God, and ask me if I would like to review them. So they saw I was doing these videos on the Nano and asked if I would like to review these. And I said, yeah, sure. Of course and uh, by the way I have the light plus so they sent those as well very nice folks over there uh, they've come a long way they are in my opinion the top two when it comes to filters for our quads out of all the brands that you go out and buy uh, a lot of people go cheaper and find that when you go cheaper you get what you pay for these are a little more up there with uh, their competitor and um, which we're just not gonna give their name a shout out but uh, Freewell is definitely worth worth the money in my opinion but when it came to this filter uh, the one thing I wondered about and I'll put this up close to the screen I wondered are they going to make it just like the uh, DJI Mini 2 because although that is a very good filter I wasn't crazy about how it attached because sometimes it felt like it was just too loose and it's metal so the one thing with that is that metal can bend a little bit and you always have to make sure that it's bent properly and when it goes on it snaps on good and secure. It's just something you have to keep in mind and be mindful of when you're putting it on the Mini 2. So if you look at this, it's kind of the same type of camera. Let's see if we go and focus there. There you go. There's really not much there to work with. It's not like the Light Plus where you can screw it on. It's going to have to snap on there somehow. So that's pretty much exactly what they went and did. They went and made the same type of filter as they did with the Mini 2. Except here was the other thing that popped in my head. I was like, wow, this is all plastic. It's metal on the Mini 2. But it turns out this plastic is very strong. It's pretty thick. It doesn't, it doesn't bend easy at all. And um, I think this is probably the better alternative because you're not going to have to worry about it use, losing its spring tension or its tensile strength. Um, and then also it's got some teeth that kind of grab on underneath that go into the vents. And then they've also got a little cutout here at the bottom. So just the bottom hair of the lens sticks out down here. And the reason for that is that way, this only goes on one way. If your lens is in there, it's going to be centered on perfectly every time. And uh, it just holds it from 
any type of vibration or anything that you don't want out of your filter. They go on very nice and secure. So let's just do that real quick and then I'll bring it back up to you. See if I can do this here with you guys being able to see it. I think you should be able to see right there. You simply bring it on. I'm going to say simple, but watch, this won't go so simple. But we bring it on and should hear a snap. There we go. It's on. So now we'll bring it up and you'll see where I was talking about the very bottom of the lens sticking out. You see that down there at the very bottom? Yeah, I think you can see it pretty good. I'll give you a couple angles here. See how it goes around the top. So that's how she goes on. And uh, it snaps on nice and secure. And I think it's going to be a good filter as long as it doesn't make our gimbal go, gimbal go crazy when we turn it on. So let's power it on, see how the gimbal reacts. Try to bring you back up into focus here and we'll try and keep it nice and level. Let's try to get in it and we'll do it straight on and then we'll do a slight angle just so you can see a couple times. Powering on. We gotta wait for it to initialize. There we go. Does not appear to be affecting it at all. It's powered right up. It calibrated fine. The only other thing I'm going to have to look for when I fly is just make sure it doesn't throw my horizon off or anything or cause any other vibrations. But uh, let's power it off and give you a different angle. See if we can do that like maybe right here. Power on. Comes right on. Let it initialize. Sorry if my arm hit the microphone here. And now let's see how she does. She's functioning just fine. So pop the weight on the uh, screen in the corner here. We'll pop the how much it weighs up here while I power this down. And you'll see that uh, it does not affect the weight whatsoever. I'm still at, her, at, at 248 grams. Um, I see people range between 248 and 249. All our scales are different. Um, but my scale is working, I promise. So, uh, I didn't, I didn't weigh these by themselves, but like I said, I mean, that's getting really down to the particulars. As long as we're, you know, within our weight class on this quad, then it's no big deal. But like, I mean, these are nothing. I mean, they weigh absolutely nothing. So take it off and put it away and then... We'll be at the end of our video, but I just wanted to touch base one more time with uh, what comes with this. Now you're going to have an envelope and inside that envelope, you'll have all kinds of goodies. You'll have a card for video tutorials. You simply scan the back, the code, and uh, you can go see some video tutorials. It comes with the wiping cloth. When you clean your filters always just give them a little brush left to right or up and down don't sit there and press and circular clear it clean it and scratch it all up and they always send you a white and a black free will sticker it's nice stick that on your case or wherever a lot of people like stickers but here's the here's the best part this guide is very handy. Make sure you keep this in your case. It simply tells you what each of your filter conditions can be or what, what the conditions are for each of the filters. So if you're a newbie or if you're like me, you're just not, not a great camera guy, um, you kind of rely on these things. So let's just use the ND, uh, let's go to ND16 and we'll use that as an example. 
So what it says for that is basically that's a 4F stop. I believe that means like it steps it down, 4F stops. The free, uh, free will ND16 filter yeah, decreases the amount of light striking the camera by 4F stops. This helps balance the image and capture sharp footage in normal daylight conditions. ND filters also effectively eliminate any or in, eliminate the unwanted jello effect often seen in footage captured without ND filters. So I'm glad I picked that one that said jello effect because we are talking about this guy right here where everybody's talking about how they have jello. So if you have this quad, uh, you now know we have a firmware update to where you have more options on your camera. You have more options in your settings. So by adjusting certain things on your camera or using the correct filter, you might be saying goodbye to that jello. So uh, keep that in mind. These are the type of things that can help with, with that right there. So that was a good example. Um, just to give you an idea of another one, we'll go up to a higher one. Uh, 32 uh, says all the same thing pretty much. With this filter, you can also capture the much desired motion blur. Uh, effect to give your footage truly cinematic look. It also protects your images from unwanted glare from unnatural light reflecting surfaces. Um, it decreases by f uh, five f stops, and uh, it's good for images in the brightest sunlight conditions. So that's what that's for. And then they've got all kinds of other long exposure filters. They've got landscape filters, and then they've got one for nighttime. It's called Clear Night. It takes out light pollution, so that, I guess, would be like your street lights and stuff. It can probably soften those up, maybe. I'm not going to get into it. That one's got a longer longer read to it, so I'm not going to get into that one. But um, go to their website. You'll see all the filters they carry and uh, for all the different quads. And... Um, you can also read about each one of those on their website as well. Now, I'm not putting the price up. I'll give you a link. I'm not affiliated with Freewell whatsoever. Uh, they do send me these for free. And uh, But like I, like I said, if anybody's been with me for a long time, they know I've been a longtime fan of this company and uh, always used to purchase their filters. So um, read between the lines there. <laughs> I do like the filters, not just because they were sent to me free. But um, uh, they make very good filters. They've come a long way. And like I said, they're, they're like the top two in my opinion. So uh, go check out their website. See what, what, what they have. And like I said, no affiliation whatsoever other than I get them free. I don't get any type of commission or anything like that. So um, that's pretty much it. I think we covered everything I wanted and uh, showed you the weight and powering it on and everything. So next, the rest of my videos to come, wherever I'm using these filters, I'll make sure to note that I'm using their filters. I'm using Indie whatever. And uh, that way you can kind of see what effects it has with the cameras from kind of an amateur uh, standpoint. I'm not, a, I'm not an advanced camera person at all. Do the best I can. So uh, with that being said, everybody, Thank you so much for stopping by and watching me in this video with my review of the Freewell filters. Go check them out. Thumbs up on your way out. As always, if you're new to my channel, like this content, hit that subscribe button, and then hit the bell for future content notifications. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace and love.